Hello everyone, this is Miss Amy here. Thank you for joining me for another fun art project. Today we're going to create this fun drawing of a clownfish, adding some color. And we're going to use a couple different types of mediums, so it could be considered a mixed media project also. So let's go over the supplies you need to create this fun clownfish today. So you will need a piece of drawing paper. You will need a pencil and an eraser. You will need a black Sharpie, some markers, and some colored pencils. And that is all you need to create this project today. So let's go ahead and get started on this fun project here. Let me move my supplies just a bit. So they're out of the way. Oh, and also if we're uh, with the colored pencils, you might need a pencil sharpener handy just in case you they wear down and you need to resharpen your pencil. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this drawing. We are going to start with the fish and then add all the anemone after that. So um, anemone is a, is a special uh, kind of like a plant or may even considered an animal in the ocean and the clownfish it does sting and so it can paralyze other fish but for the clownfish it actually um, has a protective coating on its skin to uh, protect it from those stings so they kind of work together the anemone and the clownfish and so they have a unique relationship um, in the ocean. And so that's what we're going to create today is that clownfish in among the, the long arms of the anemone. So let's go ahead and get started with our fish. We're going to start um, over to the side of our paper. If you can kind of find the middle and just move your, you move your finger over a little bit and just make a little dot there, that's going to give us a good reference point to start our clownfish. So we're going to create the body of the fish. So it's just a curved line. And I'm just, I'm going to save room to make that nice tail on the end. So I'm just going to do the top part of the body and then the bottom part of the body. This is kind of the same shape, just the opposite direction. All right. And then we're going to create, they have kind of a round tail. So we're just going to create this round kind of a curve line all the way right up to the body. All right, and then they, they have lots of fins. So they have one on top. So on top of the body, I'm just going to draw a little curve line, slightly curved up, and then I'm gonna curve it back down to the body. And then they have another one here, just a little curve line on the back. And then underneath they have this, um, kind of a longer curve line like that. And then they have a fin that goes, it's a circle, so it's gonna be a round, but I'm not gonna connect it, I'm gonna leave it open. And then I'm gonna draw another one that's kind of behind that. So this front one will overlap the one behind it. So I'm just gonna draw a partial circle here just so you can see that. And then inside all these fins, I'm gonna erase any lines that I have there. So it looks like it's in front of the body there and even on the top. And these two fins, they have lots of fins. You can even erase that little dot there. Okay, so now we're gonna add the stripes. The clownfish is orange and white stripes with a little bit of black in between. So we're gonna start with the first stripe near the face. So it kind of starts here and goes in front of that fin. So I'm just gonna curve that line down and then make a parallel line next to that. And the parallel line is a line that is runs next to the first line but doesn't cross over. So whenever I say parallel line, that's what I'm talking about. And then we're gonna create the little eyes. So I just do a curved line here and then a cut another slightly curved line below. Add the little mouth here. You can make it a happy clownfish if you wanna make a happy clownfish, you can do that. 
So now we're going to make the second stripe. The second stripe is right behind, it's between these two fins there. So behind this fin, I'm just going to come in, curve it into the body, and then um, curve it down. So it kind of starts going down, curves toward the head, and then back down. It's kind of a bumpy line. And the second line just goes from this fin down to the bottom fin. And then the last stripe will be from the back of this fin to this fin, and then to the tail there. So now we have one, two, three stripes on our clownfish. So before we color our clownfish, we're gonna add that our anemone arms or the little tentacles of the anemone. So we're gonna start, I start at the bottom of my pay, paper, so it's coming off. I don't see the bottom of it. I just see the little tentacles coming up, the plant-like um, little tentacles and so I'm just going to make them kind of curve lines and they're going to overlap my fish so I'm going to draw right on top of my fish um, curve it around so it's a nice round top and then make my parallel line back to the bottom so it's a very simple shape there and then erase whatever you see inside that so I'm going to go ahead and draw you're going to just do this randomly and draw a whole bunch of these so I'm going to come up on my clownfish some are going to be in front of the clownfish. Some are going to be behind the clownfish. So I might make another one that curves up. Stop at my clownfish. Start on the other side. Curve around. Stop. And then finish on the bottom there. That's an easy way to draw behind your clownfish. You can make them overlapping each other. So I can make this one kind of curve. Stop. Go behind that one. Curve up like this, stop, and then finish drawing it below. So it's pretty, not too hard to make something overlapping. So this one I want to overlap in front. So I'm going to curve up over, just draw it right over the front. And then you just erase everything inside there. And then this one will look like it's in front of the other one. All right, so I'm just going to do a bunch of these. You can draw as many as you like. I like to draw quite a few just to fill my paper and give some interest to my paper. Um, I may not draw as many as I did in my original just for time, but you can go ahead and have fun and fill up your paper with as many anemone little um, tentacles that you want. There we go. Draw a couple more and then we'll get started on the coloring. And that one's even going to go off the side of my paper. I love doing that. I love creating that look of going off the side of my paper. Oops. And you can adjust any lines you need to. That's what erasers are great for. All right. Draw a couple more and then we'll get started. That one's going to be tricky. It goes behind two there. That one's going to go behind. And I think I need another one that goes is big and that goes on the top of my clownfish over here. There we go. So there's some cool looking anemone. See in my example, I made quite a few more. Uh, just for the video's sake, the time we're just gonna, I'm just gonna stop there, but you can go ahead and have fun with that and draw as many as you want. So now to give us a great border to color in our fish, we're gonna trace all our pencil lines with a Sharpie. So you wanna go ahead and do that. Don't worry if you don't get exactly on the pencil line, you can erase those later. This is going to give us a really nice border to color inside of, and that's why I like to do the black Sharpie when I'm doing a drawing like this. Um, there are times I don't use Sharpies, but for this drawing, I think it looks nice, and it gives you a really nice border to color inside. And it helps your clownfish and an enemy to really stand out, too.
And we're going to use um, our clownfish. We're going to make orange like a typical clownfish, even though they can come in some different colors. But we're going to do the orange and white one. Um, the reason I colored my anemone blue is because blue and orange are complementary colors on the color wheel. And I thought that would make the other one pop. It would complement the opposite color and look really nice. And that's the reason I kind of did that that way. Of course, you can choose a different color if you prefer to um, color your anemone. They come in all different colors. I've seen some beautiful green ones and purplish ones and all different colors. You can even just Google Google that with some parents' help and find pictures of all kinds of different colored anemone. Anemone. That's a t tricky word to say. Tongue twister. Say that three times very fast. <laughs> That'll be a challenge. All right. So I got all my lines traced. And so, oops, forgot the mouth and the eye. All right, so what I wanna do um, is erase any pencil lines that are still showing. That just cleans everything up really nicely. Makes it look nice. See, and after this drawing, if you just left it like this, you could give it to a friend for a coloring page for your friend to color. It's a great way to create a coloring page too for someone or for yourself. All right. So let's get going with our markers now. I've erased all my pencil lines. So I'm gonna start with just a, a regular orange for the body of my clownfish. So I'm gonna go ahead and get orange and I'm just gonna fill in the whole body just with orange. Now with marker, you do not have to press very hard when you're coloring with marker. You wanna just um, press kind of lightly and let the color come out. Um, that will that will keep your tip of your marker from getting damaged. So um, whenever you're um, coloring with markers, you don't have to press very hard. So I'm going to go ahead and just color everything orange except for the stripes because those are going to be white. So I'm going to, we're actually going to layer our markers a bit to create a little bit of depth and um, form to our fish so but we're going to start with just the base color of this orange and it's okay if you picked a little bit lighter orange or even a little bit darker orange tail. So once you've got the orange colored in, um, I want to get a darker orange. So you could use a reddish orange. If you used a darker orange, then you can actually use a red color. But I'm going to use a, a, a reddish orange color to create a little bit of shadow. So a little bit of um, darker. So I'm going to do that on this thin here and then on the bottom side of my fish. If the light is shining through the water, the top part of my fish is going to be just a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to color this just a little bit darker here. The bottom side, just where I put orange. I'm not going to go on the white yet. We're going to use a different color for that. Um, a little bit maybe on the fin. The fin kind of has some texture, so you can just create some little lines on there if you want. Just like that. And then along the back too, this fin, they have like little, some textures. So you can add some little lines with your darker color. And the same, oops, here, follow the shape of the fish a little better there. And the back fins too, look, so they have some little texture lines there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just color all these in because it's darker on the bottom side of the fish here, creating a shadow there. 
And then on the fin, we're going to see the bottom side of the fin. It's going to have a little bit of shadow there too. And we can draw some little lines on our tail just to add a little texture. All right. So then what I do is take the orange I just got done with and I go over where the two colors meet together. And I push down just a little bit harder just to kind of help them blend just a little bit there. It does work. It does look a little bit nicer to do that when there's a little bit of blending there. There we go. See how it just looks a little bit. There, it kind of blends that. and makes it look a little softer on the edges. All right, now we're going to add our black stripes. So get your black marker. I just colored the eye in black. I don't see a lot of detail, but I'm going to make these a little thicker to create that black stripe. And the same with this one. It's a little thicker line, so I'm just making it a little thicker there. A little thicker there. Now on the fins, the fins have a black edge. So I'm just going to color the edge of the fins. Oh, make them a little thicker. Not on the body part, just on the edges. So each fin will be a little darker on the edges here. Have that black, kind of that black stripe on the very edges. And then the tail is the same. All right, once that is finished, you're actually gonna take a gray, if you have a gray marker, a really light gray I'm gonna use and create that shadow on the belly part. Just on the white stripes. That's just gonna give a little bit of shadow there and match the rest of the fish. All right, now I'm gonna use my blue and I liked a really pretty green blue color, like a teal almost. And I'm gonna color all my anemones all this really pretty teal color. You can pick whatever color you want to make. I just thought this looked really good with the uh, against the orange. You could use regular blue if you wanted. If you don't have a, this teal blue, you could definitely use a regular blue. You could use purple. Purple would look kind of cool too. And I usually make the tips a different shade of, like I'm gonna use a darker blue for the tips, but you could give it some, you could use a little bit of red or purple, just a little bit different color there. Now I'm coloring a little bit quicker, but you can go um, a little slower and take your time and do a really good job. See how that black line, that Sharpie edge gives us a really nice border. And then if we slightly go over the, to the other line, it's not going to show. It's another reason I like using the Sharpie. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and color the tips of my um, anemone uh, a little bit darker blue. So I'm gonna get this really pretty blue here and just make these a little darker. The pictures I saw of them, this is most of them. Some of them had red tips. Some of them had different depending on what color they were. 
but I thought this was really pretty. All right. So once you have all your fish hair and your anemone colored in, we're going to switch over to our colored pencils. I'll put these away. And now we're going to use some colored pencils over the top. We want it to give it like a water look, like he's in the water and you're looking through the water. And then we're going to create some movement um, with our colored pencils. So I just pick a darker blue. I pick a couple different shades of blue. So maybe a darker blue and a lighter blue. See if I can find that here. Is this my darker blue? You can always check on the opposite side of your paper. Oh yeah, that's a darker blue. And let's see, is this a lighter blue? That's a lighter blue. I might want to go with this one though. Yeah, I like this one. So I'm going to use these two blues. And I might even, even use this blue. I might use this blue instead. Yeah. Use this blue for my darker blue and this blue for my lighter blue. So I'm going to do darker blue on the bottom and then get lighter because remember our light source is coming from the top of the water, kind of shining down into the water a little bit. So what I do is I usually use the side of my lead. Um, instead of drawing like this, I use the side. And I'm just going to draw um, some curved lines through my water. They can be different. They don't all have to look the same. And then I'm going to use my lighter blue to draw some up at the top. There we go. And that's going to create the look of movement through our picture. So what you want to do then is just take the side of your pencil and you want to color that in enough so that following the shape of your line, and just color over everything. I'm not pushing down super hard. I don't want hard pressure here, just a light pressure. But I want those lines to still show. And so it's going to give me a wonderful movement. And that's another reason I made those anemone, uh, anemones curved, is it looks like they're kind of floating in the water, like the water is moving them around, um, the movement in the water. So that looks very cool. It just makes our picture seem so much more cooler too when you create that movement. Just by creating some lines. And they'll color right over your fish. It's okay. You can still see your fish through there. And it actually looks like you're looking at them through the water, like you're underwater snorkeling or something and looking at the clownfish. All right, almost finished here. So we're gonna start um, getting a little lighter now as we move up with our pencil. I'm gonna go ahead and use my lighter pencil. And if you just have one color of blue, that's okay. You could just use a little heavier pressure to create a little bit of darker and then just lighter pressure to create your lighter blue by using the same color of blue. You could do that if you only had one color of blue. That is not a problem. That's what I like about art. Sometimes you can create the same look or the same type of technique using different things, depending on what you have. All right, so. Go ahead and follow the lines that I created here. So I'm coloring in the direction of my line inside those lines i have some a bumpy surface underneath me so it's creating a little bit of texture as i rub my pencil over it which is kind of looks cool i think so you want to just this is why you need a pencil sharpener handy too because mine is getting worn down a little bit here And a little bit up here on the top. And I usually go back and just do a little bit darker along the line, just a little bit, not much, just to make them look a little more. See that movement through my paper. 
here. There you have it. There's your, now you can color this a little bit darker. I know it's showing up kind of light on my camera, but um, you could go over it again and create. So that one I created just a little bit darker. Um, so it looks like it's a little bit darker in the water, but either way is great. I love how this one turned out. This fish is really cool. So that is all for this project. Thank you for joining me for creating this fun clownfish. Um, I'm always look forward to seeing your artwork. So feel free to send me a picture of your finished project. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.